Hi, Lawrence. I'm just finishing with um, a little bit of a political rant. Hi, Pete. I was listening. It's great. <laughs> so, yeah, so really support your local businesses, but do more. Ring up and find out who's open. We're still open. We're still seeing customers or still seeing patients all online. So, anyway, hello, Lawrence. Hi, Pete. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, mate. Thank you um, so much for taking your time out now. I, I like seeing you. I'm used to seeing you in a button-up shirt, work pants, work shoes. What are you actually wearing today, mate? <laughs> this um, this outfit's brought to us by a nice little navy tee and some jeans. Just the the uh, house gear. <laughs> good, mate. Good. So working from home. So I, I'm impressed you've got long pants on. I thought in Brisbane it'd be you know shorts and um thongs still. You know us Queenslanders, once it gets below 30 degrees, we're all rugged up. So yeah, okay. it's uh, the subtly change come through, it's a little bit cooler. <laughs> now, mate, now that we've cleared up what you're wearing and, you know, how you're looking there, um, so your role, so we're talking about, um, or I was talking about your role as clinical resource manager for Metagenics. What, what in, in normal days, what would that role normally entail? Yeah, so what I normally am doing is there's two aspects. So we've got the clinical support team, which are the team of practitioners, the naturopaths that are on the phones and the emails to support accounts such as yourself and all the practitioners out there, um, as well as our retail outlets and everything to, to make sure we're giving the most up-to-date information whenever anyone needs advice. And then yeah. we've got the other branch, which is the resources team, and they are providing all the useful resources that we make at Metagenics that we give to you guys as practitioners that you can use like the technical data and the protocols and the handouts and trying to help you in clinic with the information to support your patients. So normally it looks like just, so yeah, normally it just looks like helping to make sure that we're abreast of the information and giving that to and supporting that to our accounts such as yourself. Yeah, mate. And it really does make such a difference when we're, you know, as practitioners, we're sort of, a little bit isolated, like where, where we are here in Newcastle, I have um, five other naturopaths working here as well. So we've got our own community of support. But even, even you know, when you're in the room seeing patients, like you do feel a little bit isolated sometimes. So, um, yeah, the, the support we get from you guys um, really makes all the difference, the seminars, the training, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you so much for that. Um, now, what, what's, your role, what's your role look like at the moment? What are you currently doing? So it's still very much the same, obviously. I think it's just been ramped up. At this current climate, everyone is very hungry for information. And as I'm sure we're experiencing, a lot of ourselves and a lot of our patients and our community are seeking answers. Everyone's a bit concerned, very wary about what's happening. So as practitioners, we all need to be making sure we're there to support our community. So we've ramped that up a lot. And what we're doing, and you may have seen some of these, is each week we're coming out with videos to provide you guys with the, the practitioners the most up-to-date information, whether it's on the stats or what's going on with how we're flattening the curve. We've been providing podcasts and interviews and trying to make sure that we're providing you with the most amount of support to help your patients. Because I think as you were touching on before, I, just as I joined, really banding together as communities to, to help with this. Like it's not just a matter of one particular supplement. It's not just a matter of one particular idea or business. Really it's about the connect, connectivity of the community. And I think as practitioners, we're pivotal in that community to be able to help provide people with holistic advice, whether it's on cooking or on exercise or how to help with preventing some of um, your susceptibility of immune deficiency if you are open like all at risk of developing covid so as practitioners we're all very much centered to help our community and at metagenics and especially within my team we're really trying to see how that we can support you guys so we've really started trying to ramp up the amount of information the amount of resources that we're giving you to support you on where every practitioner is at at the moment and um yeah lawrence the the um, videos that i've been watching that you guys have been putting out the podcast have been fantastic and um, two, two, two points just to make there as well is I think you really hit the nail on the head. Like um, natural medicines, like our supplements, are our secret weapon. They're like, you know, the tools in our toolbox. toolbox. But um, I think we're, from an immune system point of view, the immune system is all, all about 
being resilient, isn't it? Being able to have the flexibility to change, to upregulate, to downregulate. And we know from research that the thing that the, the areas that really help with our resilience from an immune system point of view, the natural medicines definitely play a, a, a big role. But um, it is, it's about our connectedness. Like, I think at one of your seminars recently, there was a stat on loneliness that, you know, loneliness is a bigger risk factor for having a poor immune system, uh, even above, um, I think it was above smoking and uh, other factors as well. Yeah. So I think that, yeah. that whole it's, sense it's a, of... It's surprising, like, you know, uh, you know, it comes back to that old saying, like, man is not an island, you know, and we've got to, we've got to be there to support each other. Thankfully, um, in this day and age, we've got the beauty of this kind of connectivity and the technology is there where, you know, essentially it's like we can be having this chat face to face. There's obviously some other elements that are missing in that, but it, maintaining that connectivity is really important. And as you touch on that, resilience is so important for people. I think as people got over the initial scare and the concerns around the infection, now everyone's dealing with the day to day of what that adjustment to change looks like. And change yeah. is universal and it's constant, but this is a significant change and people's lives have been uprooted. Some people have had horrible stresses about, you know, concerns with financial income and work and changing in their housing environment. So it's really putting a test to our mental resilience and our coping yeah. strategies. And I think anything we can do to help people with that is really, really important. Right now. Well, I think, um, I think we're so fortunate. One of my um, uh, earlier guests that I was talking with was saying, you know, in some respects, like our technology is at the point that this is the, the, the virus that everything was being prepared for, you know, that we do have this connectivity, we do have these amazing um, abilities for me to talk with you in your jeans and your T-shirt on your lounge in, you know, Brisbane while we're down here in um, not so sunny Newcastle today. And some other exciting news from what we were talking about before as well. Um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some access to some of your great videos that, we may be able to then, or hopefully we'll be able to put on Facebook and Instagram to really um, give people like, some even more great background information about what's going on and, you know, some real positives from what's happening as well. So thank you so much for that. I, I'm really excited about being able to do that, you know, with you over the next, next couple well, of weeks. Now, anything we can do to support you, you guys is great. Thank you, mate. And then what's great is that we then, you know, pass that on to our patients as well. So, you know, as, as everyone's sort of saying, you know, we're all in this together. And um, hopefully it's not a leaky boat that we're in. It's hopefully it's a really good, solid, you know, big cruiser or something like that. Um, now, Lawrence, um, how, are you, how are you going working from home? Look, Pete, I, I mean, I love it. I'm used to working on the road. As you know, I travel a bit for work. So for me, I'm used to working on a plane seat or the back of a taxi or a hotel room. So being out of work at home with my full office set up is a bit of a luxury and I'm pretty busy enough most days. So the ability to just be able to cut down on that commute time, which saves me probably nearly two hours a day is a significant addition to my day, which allows me to get a lot of other things done, whether that's a bit of extra work or a bit of the extra other things in my life. So I'm managing pretty well. I've been pretty blessed in this situation where Work is busy. I'm mean, doing something that I love and we're able to continue to do that. And we've got setups where it's, it hasn't changed that much for me besides I'm not sitting next to someone. I'm still able to connect with people much the same. That's fantastic. And I'm hoping that, um, as you said, that you're using, so you're saving two hours commute time a day. That's massive. That's 10 hours a it's week. Huge. So you're doing, I hope that you're not just working, as you said, in that time, that you're actually getting some time for yourself, some exercise, some immune resilience, lifestyle factors. Definitely, definitely. Like, I mean, I've got to be honest, some of that is getting chewed up with work at the moment as there's a lot going on, but I am able to use that time to, to stick to the, those health-promoting habits that we try to do every day. Like, everyone always has the best intentions. I'm sure we all started the year beginning of this year going, oh, I'm going to exercise more, I'm going to cook more better, healthier meals or whatever that might be, or I'm going to spend more time with the kids. And getting that time back from reducing that commute time means that I've been able to do that. So I've been able to get a bit more time in the water surfing or I've been able to spend a bit, a bit more time on my training, um, a bit more time study. 
So it's it's balancing out there nicely. And Lawrence, anything um, that you've come across or, or something that you've come across recently that, um, that you feel is a really positive thing um, or something uplifting, you know, from anywhere? It doesn't necessarily have to be with um, what's going on. Oh, I think definitely in terms of what I've seen is there's certainly been a really great banding together of community. It's nice yeah. to see everyone starting to say support local. People are going out of their way, whether it might be um, shopping at a small market store now instead of just always going to your bigger supermarkets or whether that's connecting with friends that you haven't necessarily connected with. You know, I know personally myself, I'll be in touch with my friends all over the world, but because of this and because people have a little bit more of that time, which is probably one of the biggest gifts, is that people have got a bit of time to actually connect with each other. So whether that's catching up with your dear friends or whether that's connecting in your local community, obviously keeping your social distancing, but <laughs> supporting smaller um, smaller businesses or banding together and really being understanding, which I think has been really impressive um, because yeah. I think when everything's running along normally, everyone kind of just forgets about the basics and it's nice to see that under pressure and under the stress everyone's going hang on we're all in this together we've got to help each other now. yeah that's awesome mate that's um that's definitely been a real positive um no you know positive theme through this whole experience so far you know week three in of these tighter restrictions so um now are you ready for uh, my famous fast five all right i'm ready now, there's been a bit of debate this week about is it the fast five, is it the lazy five with lots of fill-ins, is it, you know, the medium pace fives? So it's totally up to you, mate. We can either do the fast five or any version that you feel comfortable with. Um, we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah. All right. Favourite exercise? Look, surfing. Um, thankfully, we're still able to be able to do that up here. So... Surfing's still still there. It complies with the rules, and uh, it's great to get outside and get in the water. Beautiful. Favourite vegetable? Tricky one. I'm going to go with an outsider, uh, snow peas. Um, hopefully they're a vegetable, not a fruit. Pretty sure they are. Yeah, they're su super versatile. Salads, you can steam them, stir fries, throw them in your brackies. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd add snow peas. Um, Favourite splurge? Look, wine, you know, uh, a good drop of wine is uh, very big different from a cheap bottle. So uh, I'm known to, to splurge a bit on, on some wines and uh, put them in the cellar. Mate, um, no judgment from me on that one at all. Um, Look, it's healthy. As long as it's in moderation, it's healthy. <laughs> favourite, um, favourite health supplement? Look, these days, given the busyness, um, I would say for me, it's been Neurocalm Sleep, like just helping yeah. to make sure I'm disconnecting. Um, I guess part of the issue at the moment is you don't get that delineation of your work and your, your separate life to your home life. It's all a bit mixed. So it's sometimes a bit hard to, to cut that, um, switch off the brain, slow things down. So Neurocalm Sleep will just help to to just make sure you can be nice and calm and chilled while you've got your downtime before I go to bed and then just sleep well through those nights where it might have been a bit hectic through the days. Now, that's awesome, mate. And as we know, sleep is um, probably the, the number one health tip to try and keep good through these times as well. And one thing Definitely. that you can't live without. Look, controversial at the moment, but I'm going to say internet. Because without the internet right now, you've got no work, you've got no play, yeah, um, and you've got no connectivity. So as, as horrible as that answer sounds in the normal circumstances, right now it's certainly making life a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable and keeping everything running uh, ordinarily as much as possible. Uh, beautiful. It's a good answer, mate. And, and it's uh, coming from a tech, a tech head like yourself, uh, it's not... Um, unreasonable um that you'd come up with the internet true so thank you for that <laughs> and um just before we finish up lawrence what's your um uh, number one health tip at the moment what would you recommend slow things slow things down and try and find the beauty in the small things like um there's a lot of mayhem running around out there and there's certainly a lot of 
fear that's being contagious through the news and through the social media. And so I think it's really important that we disconnect from that a little bit. Um, try to, you know, as much as I just said, like the internet's important, like try to find what's happening in your day-to-day -day life in front of you. Walk with your feet, pay attention to what's happening in the moment and try to find something I think every day that you're, that, that lights you up, that, that brings you joy. Like with a lot of, potential stresses and negativity around at the moment. I think it's really important in that, that we chisel out time and dedicate towards focusing towards something that's more engaging than uplifting and that sort of raises your emotional tone a little bit. That'll make us yeah. feel great. So whether that's walking a dog or spending time with the family and the kids or just chilling out, watching the sunset, going for a walk, reading your book, just I think we all need to find that 20 minutes a day at least to just, connect with us and kind of connect with the higher self of us and just feel a bit more elated. So that's what, and I think we've probably, the gift is we've got a little bit of time to do that at the moment um, yeah. as we're not running around everywhere. So I think we can use that time and dedicate it towards that. It can be a positive, especially in the long run. That's awesome, mate. So find some joy every day. Lawrence, yeah. thanks so much. Thanks so much. I've really enjoyed having a chat with you. And I love to see this. Um, I'm loving seeing this more casual version of you with a T-shirt. Maybe um, we can talk to Paula that this might continue when you are actually back in the office. Yeah, yeah. The, the new work, the new work schedule, the new um, work uniform. I'm, I'm happy with that. Absolutely. <laughs> Mate, well, take, take care. And um, I'll be talking with you soon um, about those videos and what we can do. So, um, but thank you so much again for today. And um Take care. Thanks, Pete. And thanks again for what you're doing. Like It's practitioners like you guys that are supporting the community that are helping everyone in this current time. So thank you very much for everything. Thanks so much.